In today's lesson, we are going to look at three power user tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of OneNote. And as you will see here in just a moment, all three of these tips and tricks depend on services and storage that are happening outside of OneNote. Let's get started. Now let's start with this item right here, which is the ability to embed a file in OneNote. And as you can see, this is something that is new with the UWP version. This is the UWP version here. I'm gonna start with the Office 365 version. In terms of the difference, the UWP, the Universal Windows Platform, is the one that is included free with Windows 10, and it's also the version that you can install on an iPad, an iPhone, an Android device, or a Macintosh laptop. With that said, let's switch over to the Office 365 version. This is the one that comes bundled with the rest of Office 365. And when you're working with this, you may want to insert something like a spreadsheet. So just go to the Insert tab, and you can click on the Spreadsheet drop-down. You can also do this with a file attachment uh, or a Visio diagram in this example here. But I will do an existing Excel spreadsheet and then just select something from my desktop and insert it. Now, here is the caveat when you are attaching a file to OneNote is that it actually creates a copy of that file that's independent of the original. Let me show you what I mean here. If I give this a double click and open up the attachment, you can see up here in the title bar that this Excel for Busy People Sandbox 3, this file name, is different than the one that's actually on the desktop. So if I minimize these windows here and just will peek at the desktop, Excel for busy people sandbox again it's not the same thing so if I make a change here it's not going to be reflected over here so let's just uh, illustrate that point by doing this let's give this desktop file a double click let's open it up let's change oh, the background color so we'll just uh, highlight it in yellow and then we will save and close the file so now if I switch back over to my office 2016 version of OneNote and give Excel for Busy People Sandbox a double click. Notice that we do not have that yellow highlighting that I just added to the file that lives on the desktop. So you have to be mindful of that. If you want to keep things in sync a little bit easier, what I suggest is that rather than inserting a file, that instead you insert a link. So you can use the Insert tab again, use Link, and then in the Office 365 version, it's fairly straightforward. All you have to do is browse to an address. So we'll choose that and click on OK. And then that's fine. Text to display is Excel Sandbox. And we'll just put it right here. We don't have to steer it to a specific place. So there's the link. And now if I click on the link, it actually opens up the file that is on the desktop. And those are the changes that you just saw me create. So this can be very confusing when you are working with files that you want to attach or link, and you just kind of have to know how these things work. Otherwise, it can be very frustrating very quickly when you're working with OneNote. If you're using the free UWP version, it works very similar. You can insert a file or a PDF or a picture, but it's going to be a separate entity until this new update was released recently. And what you can do when you are attaching a file, so here's option A, is that you can attach a file and open it up, but it becomes a separate entity that's embedded in OneNote. So now if I delete this, which I'll do by selecting it and hitting the delete key on the keyboard, I'm going to go up here to my settings. And if you're using the Macintosh version, you can go to the program window and open up the preferences. But what you'll get to here in the settings on the Windows version is you want to click on Options. And then from Options, you want to do this. You want to go down to File Attachments and save your file attachments in OneDrive where you can edit and share them. So this should be off by default, but it's a feature that you can enable just by sliding that little button. And then when you're done, all you have to do is just go back to Options and uh, close your settings. Just click somewhere in one of your note pages to make the options go away. So with that enabled, I can go back to the Insert File button. And now if I insert this spreadsheet, now you get kind of a different looking interface and the upload is scheduled. So now after that spreadsheet has had time to be uploaded to OneDrive, 
I can open up the spreadsheet by clicking on the link. This is just kind of a picture representation of the spreadsheet. This isn't something that you can go in and make any changes to. You have to open up the file. So again, this and this desktop version are going to be separate entities. So it can be a little bit confusing, but if you are keeping track of maybe a, a spreadsheet of sales figures or inventory or something like that, and you're using OneNote to keep notes about the file that you're constantly updating, then this can be a great way to do that. Another power user tip that you may want to take note of that also uses an outside service is the OneNote Web Clipper. And if you take notes on internet-based material, then the Web Clipper is a great way to get that information. So as you can see, I have switched over to Microsoft Edge, and no matter what browser you're using, all you have to really do is go to onenote.com forward slash clipper. So if you go to that address or if you do a search on OneNote Web Clipper, then when you get to this website, the site should detect your browser and then you should be able to download the OneNote Web Clipper for whatever browser you happen to be using at the time. So once that's done and you installed it and relaunch your browser, you should see an icon in the upper right hand side. Once you do that, you will sign in. So are you going to sign in with a Microsoft account or a work and school account? Of course, the answer to that is it depends. It just depends on what account you're using with OneNote. In my case, I'll sign in with a work or school account. And once I've signed in, I can just start browsing the internet. Say, for example, that I am collecting recipes that I'm going to make for dinner next week or next month. I can browse to the recipe page. I can click that. And what's really nice is that it will try to detect what's on the page. So this will change depending on what page you're at. Sometimes it'll try to clip an article. But in this case here, it's great about just clipping the recipe. Now you can clip a full page. You can clip a region in case, in which case you will just click and drag a region. But what's really nice and what works most of the time is this third option down. And in this case, I'll just clip the recipe and not all of the other stuff that's on the page. So now the thing to decide is where you want to put this. So now you get to click the drop down and steer it to a location and maybe to a specific page. So in this case, I've got an entire notebook of recipes and we'll just put it on the comfort food section and I will click on clip and then the page will be added to that notebook. So pretty easy to do. If I click on view in OneNote, that will take me to the online version. So most of the time I don't do that just because I use the desktop installation of OneNote. Now the third power user tip is this, to use IFTTT, and that stands for if this, then that. And this is another thing that uses an outside service to make OneNote work with lots of other devices in your life. So to do that, just head over to the website ifttt.com and then sign up for an account. Once you sign up for your account, you will log in. And once you sign in, you will start to use IFTTT by configuring and enabling applets. So for example, I've set up one IFTTT applet so that if I'm in my house and I can't find my phone, all I have to do is say, hey Google, find my phone and my phone will start ringing and I'll be able to find my phone. Now in terms of integrating this with OneNote, all you really have to do is start with services. If you don't see it here, you can do a search or you can do a search up here and type in OneNote. And then you'll see the results here. Here are the applets, and you can see all of the applets that you can use, or you can just start by connecting a service. So now you'll be taken to a page that looks like this, and you'll start by connecting a OneNote notebook to if this, then that. And once that's done, all of this stuff is pretty straightforward. For example, you can save all your handwritten notes to OneNote. You can send your iPhone screenshots to OneNote. You can send pocket favorites to OneNote. So there's just a host of things that you can do. And it's just a matter of coming in and selecting the applet. And you can do all this, by the way, from your smartphone device, or in this case, your iPhone, and then turning it on and then configuring some of the settings in terms of where to send the thing that you are are clipping or sending. So in this case, I'm, I'm sending uh, iPhone screenshots. So because I haven't configured it before, I'll have to log in to connect my account, and that's fine. That's all you have to do to get things started. But really, the idea was just to make you aware of this 
service, which is available to help you connect hundreds of devices. But in the case of OneNote, there are some really unique things you can do by using If This Then That. Hope you enjoyed those three power user tips and tricks. Hope you find them useful. And if you did, please make sure and subscribe. We post these videos every week.